to this episode of Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. The talent just keeps coming and coming the month of December. Today, I'm with a very special guest. She is a perfect combination of city and country, a singer, a songwriter. Please welcome Alicia Eichel. Alicia, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad to have you on my show. Thank you. First things first, though, I, I need to ask, you've just posted something. This is probably going to be the most important question of the of the <laughs> night, but you just posted something related to chocolate caramel pretzel bar. Tell me about that. That looks delicious. It is delicious. So I love to bake. So that's the last of the Christmas baking I need to get done. I just did it up this morning. And yeah, it's chocolate caramel pretzels bark, and then you break it into chunks and, uh, very, very good. I made three pans because it's a family favorite. So all my nieces and nephews love it. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I saw that and I'm like, man, I got to try me some of that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to figure out uh, a day to hook up with you and get that. But uh, where are you calling in from today? I am calling in from very snowy, very, very cold Canada. <laughs> okay. And so are you spending the rest of the year out there? Yeah, I've been back in Canada for a while just because of the pandemic and everything. I was living in Nashville, and then I moved back to Canada, um, left half my stuff in Nashville, so I'm hoping to get back down there. My heart is honestly equally split between Nashville and Alberta, Canada. Um, but I will be here for a while, it looks like, and here for a very, very white and cold Christmas, <laughs> which I do love a white Christmas, but it was minus 41 this morning. Ouch, that's a little too cold for me. And uh, Way too cold. I, I, and here in Tampa, Florida, it's about uh, 85 during the day. So uh, oh. it's not it's not very Christmassy as far as the weather. We did have a cool front there for a while. And I say cool front because it got down to the 50s, but uh, that's about it. That's chilly for there, though, for sure. And when it's humid, it feels even colder. Yeah, it's a little funny when people bring out the jackets, though. I don't, I don't get that because I did spend some time up at nor up north, and uh, uh, seventy degrees, sixty degrees, and jackets are coming out. It's kind of funny to me. So you you it mentioned, is. you know, the the travel between um, Canada and Nashville, and we'll mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what what brought you to Nashville. Right now, you're saying that you can't really travel that much. Is Canada still locked down quite a bit? Yeah, it's a very different situation up here, unfortunately. Uh, I wish we were like Florida. <laughs> Florida's awesome. Wide open. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. Um, yeah, up here it's been a very different story. So things are things are different, but we're hanging in there. And, uh, and yeah, Cash, my dog, I'll let him say hi here, my little Frenchie. He's missing Nashville. He loves the uh, weather down there. He's not fond of this cold especially when he has to go outside to potty in it. He is not very happy. <laughs> but we wear well, jackets. We bundle up. <laughs> hello, Cash. I guess it's the dog in black, correct? He is my little man in black. <laughs> yeah, so I, I assume that uh, he's named after Johnny. He is. And uh, it's neat that you're Hank Jr. Because my first Frenchie, uh, he's in heaven now, but his name was Hank. And oh. he was my heart dog. He was very special. He was also a French bulldog. And uh, he got me through a lot of hard times in life. So Hank has always been a very special name to me as well. And I'm assuming named after Hank Williams. Yes. <laughs> so, so you must like classic country. I do. I love all country. I grew up on 90s country. and uh, But I've always been a fan of all the old stuff. I mean, the original country artists who were out first, they paved the way for the rest of us. And I have a lot of respect for them. And, and I love listening to, to the older country as well. Okay. So what inspired you to go then into, uh, into music? Was it the country classics? Was it uh, a mixture of country or was it uh, family members, friends? What turned you on to music? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, I grew up in Kelowna, British Columbia, so it's the furthest west province. And when I was growing up there, country music was not cool <laughs> and uh, was not a big thing. And my parents got me into country music when I was a kid. I was about eight years old and I started listening to, you know, Shania and all these cool artists that were coming out in the 90s and just loved them. And uh, I've always been a fan of not only the artists and the music, but the songs, the actual songs, you know, country music are about stories. 
And so I had a passion for country music right from about eight years old. And I grew up singing in church. And then when I wasn't in church, I'd be singing country and, and, uh, and just loved it. So I, I can thank my parents for that. So you were definitely country before it was cool over there, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> and so you said you got a little bit of the start in the church, and I believe you had a uh, very uh, uh, awesome performance in church in front of uh, a couple of thousand people, and that kind of started your uh, singing in front of a crowd. Tell me about that, and how does a little girl do that? Yeah, and that's great that you asked that because, you know, we're in the Christmas season right now, and my very first performance, I was four years old, and it was a Christmas Eve service at my church. And we went to a really big church. It was about 2,000 people um, Christmas Eve. And uh, the pastor pulled all the kids up on stage and said, "Who?" we all sang away in a manger. And then who can sing the second verse? And I had my arm up. I know it. I know it. <laughs> so I sang um, verse two of away in a manger to the entire church. I was four years old. And, you know, it's funny at four years old. You don't really think about being nervous. You just okay. go with it. And uh, and it was so amazing. And I started really getting involved singing in church when I was about 12 was when I really started getting involved um, singing on worship team and in choir and doing solos and uh, playing parts in the Christmas plays. I was married a couple of times and had Christmas solos. And so I can I can really thank my church for giving me that that you know exposure and believing in me and you know, giving me that confidence to be able to get up and sing in front of people. And from there, I just continued to sing and perform. And I took classical piano since I was eight years old and started voice lessons as a teen and picked up guitar a little bit later and went into music in college. So it's, it's always been my passion and my career path. Okay. So you weren't nervous as a young girl, but did you ever get nervous when you got up on stage? Absolutely. I mean, I think as a teenager, I think that's when it really hits you. And uh, it's interesting because I currently teach music as well. I have over 30 music students. And I notice a lot of times in the teenage years, they'll start to get nervous. And I say, I get it. Nerves are normal. Um, you know. So I what do you tell the students? Uh, any any tips or tricks to that you use to help calm yourself down or to block everything out? Yeah, I say just to pretend that it's just you, you know, you're just just be in the music. And uh, one thing that I find is, you know, even now, I'll sometimes get nervous with a singer songwriter show or a show with my band and a little bit of nerves, I think is good, because I think it kind of shows a humbleness, you know, if you're not too, you don't want to be too overconfident, I don't think and, and uh, nerves just mean that you care, you know, you care about, about the performance. And um, I find as soon as I start the song, whether I'm playing piano or guitar, or just singing, as soon as I start it, I'm usually good. It's just that getting started. So I always tell my students, you know, just go with it. If you make a mistake, keep going. Most people won't even notice and just have fun, have fun with it. And once you get going, do you find yourself that you feed off the audience? Are you one of those artists that just love the emotion that the crowd brings? Absolutely. The energy from the audience is incredible. You know, and uh, and I find too when it's full band shows with my band, we're like a family. I call them my band fam. They're amazing. They're up here in Canada, and uh, you feed off the energy of each other on stage as well as the audience, and it's just so much fun. I love I love an active audience. I love it when people sing along and dance and have fun because that's what it's all about. Okay, and I like to play uh, one of your songs. That's I guess it's your most recent song, right? Uh, Household. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play that here on Hank's Corner. Out in the country At least a mile down from that exit of the highway There's a wooden rail fence that leads to a gravel driveway On a piece of land from the ground up We use timber beams and bricks to build our dreams The foundation so strong it could weather anything Or so it seemed When I was with you It was a bedroom
just heard Household by Alicia Eichel. This is Hank's Corner and I'm Hank Jr. So Alicia, before you actually made the complete transition to Nashville, you came across something that was basically life-changing and almost this music career may not have ever happened. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I was actually really young. I just graduated high school and I was starting um, college as a voice major, piano minor in a music program. I had scholarships and a tumor was found in my thyroid gland and it was quite large. And so the doctors said it has to be removed. They couldn't tell if it was cancerous or not after numerous tests and biopsies. So they removed the tumor. And unfortunately during that surgery, they, they said they were extra careful and everything and knew that I was a singer. But during that surgery, the recurrent laryngeal nerve that makes the vocal cords move was severed. So they didn't know at the time of the surgery that they had severed it. I woke up with no voice. I had this tiny, tiny little whisper and they just said, oh, your voice will come back. It's just swelling. And so I was in the hospital for three days and then went home to heal and still no voice, moved to a new province. I moved to Alberta from British Columbia and uh, to attend college, I still couldn't talk. <laughs> and here I'm starting as a, a voice major. So that was pretty interesting. And How scary was that for you? It was incredibly scary. At that point, I was still, you know, trusting, well, the doctors must know what they're talking about. And, <laughs> you know, still trusting that, okay, it's just going to take a bit more time. And then when I started college, it was about a month later, and I still had no voice. And so my vocal coach said, you know, this isn't normal. And so she got me in with a throat specialist uh, in the city and uh, they put a camera down through my nose to look and uh, found that my right vocal cord was completely paralyzed. So it was just laying there completely limp, no movement at all. The left vocal cord was trying to overcompensate and move far enough over to the right one to make the noise. The vocal cords come together like a V and they move together and the air goes through creating the sound. So the left was trying to move, so it wasn't healthy for the left. The right vocal cord had no movement, and that's when they determined uh, right then and there that the nerve was severed. And I remember asking, I had a tiny little whisper, so I asked the, uh, the specialist, is there anything I can do? Is there some kind, of, um, some kind of therapy, something? And he said, no, once a nerve is severed, it's done. There's nothing you can do. And so I asked him in my little whisper, so pretty much all I can do is pray for a miracle. And he looked at me and he said, what the hell else can you do? Mm. <laughs> you know, he was, he was pretty, um, I guess blunt. quite blunt and ne negative <laughs> about it. And uh, I left there just a total mess. I was in tears. Um, I didn't have a car my first year of college. So I, you know, hopped on the city bus to, to get home and, and, uh, was just bawling, crying, total mess and got home. And I remember, 
kind of screaming at God inside. I was so upset. And I was like, why would you give me this gift and this passion? Because, you know, I've always had had my faith. And uh, why would you give me this passion and this gift and scholarships and a place to live and, you know, provide all of this and then take, just take it. And um, I went to, I went to my sister's church that weekend. My parents drove out to be with me. And there was a man uh, speaking who'd been healed from cancer. And so I just went up for prayer after. And um, I, I had it kind of confirmed that, you know what, God's going to heal you. And, uh, and you're going to be singing in front of crowds of people and God's going to heal you. And, you know, didn't know when, didn't know why this was happening or how long it was going to take. Um, but I just believed, I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to believe. I'm, I'm going to have hope and believe in a miracle. And I know that miracles happen and <laughs> um, I'm just going to believe that, that there's a reason. And so I went three months without talking. My speaking voice came back. I went back to that same specialist. He put the tube down my throat and looked and uh, he was floored. When, when he walked into, he said, hi, Alicia, how are you? And I said, good, how are you? And his jaw dropped because I was talking. So when he put the tube down and looked with the camera and saw that my vocal cord was moving, he was just totally blown away. And I said to him, you know, thousands of people were praying for me. People across Canada, people I didn't even know were praying. Um, I was hearing stories of, you know, families, churches, relatives, churches praying for me, which is amazing. And um, he just said, wow, this can't be explained scientifically, <laughs> medically. He said, come back in three months. I want to follow this. So I went back in three months. And at that point, my right vocal cord was in full movement. Everything was completely working and healed. And he said, you can start singing again. And that's an awesome ending to the story. Mm -hmm. And I'm great that, uh, or I'm, I'm happy for you that, uh, that it did turn out that way. But I guess even during the time, were there moments, I mean, obviously at the beginning, you know, you mentioned, you know, reaching out to God and, yeah. uh, but were there moments in between that, you know, did, did your faith waver a little, was it always strong? Um, you know, how did you, you know, keep moving? Because, you know, it's one thing to hear the story and, you know, it, it has that happy ending. Yeah. But during that time that everything's going on, there's got to be a struggle, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, um, it was very hard because I didn't really have a timeline. I didn't know. I really believed that God was going to heal me. Um, but I didn't know when. <laughs> I didn't know how. I didn't know what it looked like. Um, you know, and at the time, I didn't know why it was happening, but I just decided to trust. Um, but I did have a lot of times, you know, and, and being in a music program in college and seeing other singers singing and thinking, oh, I just, I can't wait to sing again. It's my passion, you know, and and uh, just thinking I will never take this for granted again because you know what it's like to lose it. And, and do you think that your passion for music is even stronger now because of that? Absolutely. I would say what I went through definitely is what fuels my passion as an artist. Um, I would also say what I went through really made my faith real to me because, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, grew up going to church, but going through that made it so real because it, it showed me, it just showed me how real it was. And, you know, I think it's times like that when you go through these life changing things that it really makes it real and shows you and it, it gave me a lot of perseverance. It taught me patience <laughs> big time and uh, taught me a lot of things. And I think it happened so that I could share the story of hope with others. Um, so I do try to share that story as much as I can, because I think it's important, you know, whether people share the same faith as me or not, um, it's important to have hope. So, And that's why I kind of wanted to, you know, get that story told here today because it is the Christmas season, which yeah. is a great, it's a great season. Obviously, you know, it's the birth of the savior and mm -hmm. we, we have, uh, you know, so many great things that are attached with it, you know, and yeah. then the presents and everything. But for a lot of people, the Christmas and holiday season, uh, you know, brings back some challenges or some, you know, things that people mm -hmm. are getting through and your story is such an inspiration. Like you said, it, it, there, there is hope. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that, you know, you're able to tell it to us today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And thank you for allowing me to share my story and, and asking about it. I really appreciate that. Okay. And then, 
sometimes when I guess you're, I'm trying to do a, you know, a cheesy segue, but sometimes when you're struggling with stuff, uh, you know, you just kind of need to get away or in your case gets lost. Right. So you yeah. wrote a song or did you, did you write that song get lost? I think you did. I did. Yeah. I co-wrote it with my producer, Daniel Dennis in Nashville. Okay. And so sometimes it, it just needs to be done. So, uh, you know, why don't we go ahead and play get lost here on Hank's corner. Corner with uh, Alicia Eichel singing that, and uh, so we did allude right before the song that uh, you are a songwriter. You wrote that song. Tell me a little bit about your songwriting process, because um, you know I I even go back to your uh, album Golden, mm -hmm. and you got some songs on there like Without June and Your Last Chance that I really like because they're so emotional. And then of course you got you know Get Lost, which is so fun. So you got these different songs, these different uh, emotions that it brings out. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you write these songs? You know, do you pull them from your personal experience or is a lot of it co-writing? Yeah, I both, I co-write and I write on my own. So, you know, Get Lost was a co-write, Household was a co-write with Kelly Sedell in Nashville. Uh, One Wish, which I think we're gonna listen to in a little bit is a, a song that I wrote on my own. So it, it just really depends. Um, your last chance I wrote on my own, that one was inspired by um, the story that my grandma shared with me of my grandpa passing away really suddenly when they were really young. And uh, my dad was only two and she raised you know five kids on her own. And so that story was inspired by my grandma. And uh, you know, so sometimes stories are inspired by things that I go through. A uh, household was inspired by something that I went through. Uh, Last Chance was inspired by my grandma. 
Um, sometimes things are inspired by a co-writer and, and their idea or something that they've been through. So it really just depends. And, you know, I really try to write from an honest place, write from my heart. And, um, you know, I, I do love writing the ballads. I find that they come naturally to me, writing mm. the really meaningful songs and love songs and heartbreak songs and, you know, all kinds of life songs. Is that because it helps you deal with some of the stuff that you've gone through? Is that an outlet for you? Yes, 100%. It's a uh, songwriting is therapy. It really is. You know, I journal uh, most every day and a lot of times my journaling turns into songs and if I'm going through something hard, I'll sit down on my piano and play and sing or grab my guitar and, you know, so it definitely is an outlet. And um, as far as co-writing goes, I did a ton of co-writing when I was in Nashville and I'm still doing, doing quite a bit up here. I do it over FaceTime and Zoom. And uh, the nice thing with co-writes is you just kind of get together and you say, okay, what are, what are we feeling today? <laughs> you know, and you'll both bring ideas to the table and you'll kind of hash out a few ideas and kind of see what you're feeling with writing. And uh, I love the creative process of co-writing. And you said you do some journaling and... I had heard that at one point, I mean, you were like a, a writing machine. You were just, uh, you know, pulling them up, you know, a song a day almost at one point. And uh, that's, a, that's a lot of writing. Um, and so hopefully we'll get to hear a lot of those. But um, if, you, if you don't get to sing one of the songs that you've written, do you have an artist in mind that you would just really love to, you know, have sing your song that you would just die if they said, hey, Alicia, I want, I want to put a hold on that and I want to sing that? <laughs> Well, I think for really personal songs of mine, I'm always like, I want to sing this one and release it if it's a really personal story. But uh, as far as other like songs that maybe aren't quite as personal or co-writes, um, honestly, I think there would be a lot of different artists that I'd be honored if they did. It's hard to just pinpoint one, but there would be a lot of artists that are established who I have a lot of respect for that if someone came to me and said, we, we want that song, <laughs> it would be an honor for sure. And I think I know there's a few big writers who I would love to write with, uh, Shania Twain being one of them, Dolly Parton being another, um, some of these ladies who I look up to and who I grew up listening to, who it would just be a dream to co-write with. And I'm, I'm assuming, too, because one of the questions I like to ask is to be able to perform with, uh, I guess those would probably be on the top of the list. Would you have anybody else that would be awesome to perform with? I would say um, Shania would be, yeah, top of the list. I love her stage performance. I love the energy of her shows. And uh, Garth Brooks would be incredible to perform with as well. Again, I love his energy. I love his heart. Um, him and Trisha, I think they're amazing. Um, and there's so many more. <laughs> it's hard to just name a couple. And you, and you mentioned Garth Brooks. Uh, you know, I, I got to see him a couple times. And, and of course, a lot of people have seen him on TV and he is full of energy. Can you keep up with him? I would, yes. Okay. I, I, <laughs> with my band, when we do our shows, we keep them quite upbeat. Like we do some originals and a lot of cover tunes. And uh, I like to keep them really upbeat and fun. We throw in a couple slow ones, but uh, I love to move around. So I actually don't play piano and guitar the entire time I'll play a few songs on piano per set, a couple on guitar per set and the rest I'm just singing and I'm like dancing around, moving. <laughs> and I'm maybe, like, maybe jumping on some of the ropes, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love to jump around and oh man, I, when I see these big shows, I think, oh, that would be so fun to do a big show like that. I would love it. <laughs> and you mentioned that you wrote One Wish. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so One Wish uh, was my, is my first Christmas song that I've ever released, and uh, I wrote it from a really heartfelt and honest place. Um, the year that I wrote it, I had lost um, two very important uh, people in my life, and um, so I was, you know, going through some grief, and I also had a relationship, a uh, five-year long-term relationship end. So there was just a lot of stuff going on that year <laughs> that was really hard, and um you know, one wish is just, it came straight from the heart. You know, sometimes you reflect on past Christmases and those special times with, with your loved ones and sometimes wish that you could get those back. Um, whether it's someone who's passed or someone that's just no longer in your life for whatever reason. And um, I have experienced that. So it, it's a very heartfelt song and um, means a lot to me. I wrote it on piano and, and recorded it in Nashville with Daniel Dennis at Prime Cut Studio. And uh, last year, I actually had the honor of uh, 
do, shooting a music video for it here in Canada in a beautiful show home with Randy Rich Films. And we were able to release that and that was just such a blessing to be able to do. And they actually contacted me wondering if I would do a music video for it in the show home. And I said, absolutely. <laughs> And I also love that you mentioned Randy Rich Films because mm -hmm. uh, I do photography, I do videography on the side. And one of the things I, I tend to ask artists is who's doing your work? And I know Randy does uh, some commercials and he does real great real estate work and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, videos. And uh, yeah. so, you know, I'm glad that you plugged him and, uh, you know, nice. good job, Randy, out there doing <laughs> that. But yeah, when I heard One Wish the first time, I mean, there's a lot of Christmas songs that, you know, are fun and jolly and, you know, there's some are, you know, a little bit uh, slower, but when I heard yours, um, that really, you know, touched my heart. I thought that was very emotional. Uh, and I was just like, I love the song. And, uh, so why don't we go ahead and play one wish here on Hank's corner. The snow is falling, lights are twinkling, people laughing, it's Christmas time. Make a list and check it twice and send to Santa's Christmas time. But I don't have a list. There's just one. Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. along with Alicia Eichel. And that was one of my favorite Christmas songs of the year, One Wish. So we are in the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me a little bit about your celebration of Christmas. Do you have any traditions that you've done for years? We do. So I come from a very big family. I'm the youngest of four. 
Uh, so I have three older siblings. They all have kids. I have 11 nieces and nephews. I've been an auntie since I was six. <laughs> so, um, so it's really fun. And uh, we like to have a big family Christmas. We eat a lot of good food. And my mom and I do a ton of baking. And uh, we actually like to go on what we call a twinkle tour. So we all pile mm. into vehicles with our hot chocolate and cookies. We drive around and look at Christmas lights while we play Christmas music and uh, call it a twinkle tour. So um, we'll be doing that this year. And we actually have a tradition on Christmas morning of uh, waking up everybody with um, Sammy Kershaw's Christmas Times Coming. And we blast oh, it. Wow. As as we can. And that started when I was a kid. So um, <laughs> my parents had a blown speaker way back in the day. And um, we had this big family Christmas with all the older cousins and everyone. And, and they had blasted it. Because the speaker was blown, it sounded like a boot kicking the floor of the bass. Mm. So we call the song The Boot. <laughs> <laughs> the Boot. So every Christmas morning, we got to play The Boot, and we got to blast it and wake everyone up. And I'll be just like a kid. I'll run around and wake up my nieces and nephews and jump on their beds. And I'm just like a kid on Christmas. So it's pretty fun. Uh, that sounds so fun. So one of the questions I usually follow up with is about Christmas Carol. So that one from Sammy Kershaw, is that your favorite one? Or do you have other favorites? Oh, I have other favorites. I mean, I love Christmas music, so it's pretty hard for me to pick a favorite. Um, I love Oh Holy Night. I love What Child Is This. I actually love that one on piano. My favorite carol to play on the piano is the Ukrainian bell carol. It's beautiful. Mm. And that's one of my favorites to teach my students as well. So um, I have so many favorites. I love the uh, Alabama Christmas album. I love the Dolly and Kenny Christmas. Oh, yes. From like before my time, like it's like an 80s, early 80s album, I think, but I love it. <laughs> it's That's, just that fun. is a great album. There's yeah, a lot like, of great songs on that one. And <laughs> it's so fun. And I see that you have a tree up there behind you. Are, do you prefer artificial or uh, real trees? Well, when I was living out on a farm, uh, we would go out and cut down real trees. And it gets, it's very cold up here, but we go by horse and sleigh sometimes and do it. And uh, lots of fun. I like the real trees. I love the smell, um, but I don't always love the mess. <laughs> so uh, it's yes. actually an artificial one. And one of my favorite ornaments is Nashville. <laughs> oh, have you ever spent a Christmas in Nashville? Uh, when I was living down there, I flew back to Canada on December 23rd. So I was almost spent a Christmas there. I was there for the whole Christmas season, flew back to Canada on the 23rd to be here for Christmas with my family. So I haven't actually spent a Christmas there. I've been there for a couple of Thanksgivings, which has been really fun. Uh, your Thanksgiving is actually a month and a half later than our Canadian right, one. Right. I've down there for that and, and it's really fun to celebrate with y'all down there, so. And let me, let me ask, do you eat as much as we do when it comes to Thanksgiving? Well, we know how to do our pretty good feasts up here in Canada. So I think we probably do. Okay. <laughs> And how about uh, Christmas shows or movies? Do you have a favorite one of those? Uh, anything Hallmark. <laughs> oh, okay. Hallmark. I am obsessed with Hallmark Christmas movies, so much so that I want to be in one. So it's my dream to be in a Hallmark Christmas um, with my music and do some acting. would be so much fun. And I love some of the old um, funny classics. Like we love the, uh, the Griswold's Christmas, the National Lampoon's Christmas. It's just yes. so fun. So that's kind of a family favorite because it's it's really funny and everyone loves that one. <laughs> okay, so uh, hint hint Hallmark, yeah, you need to reach out to Alicia here and uh, yeah. uh, bring her on. And uh, so that that's obviously a great segue to goals. So we're coming up to 2022. Mm -hmm. Do you have any goals for next year? Do you have any resolutions? Yeah. So I think um, for me, resolutions, I kind of look at it a little differently. I kind of. Uh, usually kind of have a word of the year. Um, so this past year for me was surrender. And it was okay. just, you know, being back in Canada and not really knowing when I'm going to move back to Nashville and what things are looking like. And just surrendering, surrendering that over to God and just saying, okay, you know what you have for me, you know the plans and my purpose and, and uh, help me to use my gifts the way you want me to use them and open and close the doors accordingly where you want me and where you don't want me. So, um, that's kind of how I look at goals as well is that, you know, I work hard. I am very driven and very goal oriented. 
Um, but I'm also at a place of just saying, okay, God, where do you want me? Open and close those doors, open doors and I will go. <laughs> and um, I think for me, it's just knowing that I'm knowing that I'm using my gifts for a good purpose is the biggest. So I would love to do another album. I would love to do a Christmas album eventually, uh, more music videos. My dream is to live on a tour bus <laughs> and tour all over North America would be just incredible. And you know, that, that would be a dream. But um, ultimately I look at it and I'm like, whatever God has is going to be fulfilling. So I give it to him and, and work hard. It doesn't mean that you sit around and do nothing. It means you work hard and you work with what you're given and, and take those opportunities, but also not forcing opportunities that maybe aren't the right ones. Right. Well, I, I love hearing that. And, and that's great. So, you know, I do wish all the best of you, best to you in 2022. And of course, if you do get on that tour bus, love to have you come down to the Tampa Bay area and uh, I definitely will get a front row seat for that. I would love that. I love Florida. It's beautiful. <laughs> Y'all have such nice weather and everyone's so friendly. So yeah, I will be there. <laughs> All right. And uh, thanks again for being on Hank's Corner. Everybody, you need to uh, check out Alicia um, on all our social media. Um, I got the website uh, posted below. Uh, but be sure to check her out. Uh, you, you won't uh, be disappointed. But thank you for coming on my show. And you're welcome to be a guest on Hank's Corner anytime. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hank. I really appreciate it.